Hey there, so I'm in the middle of an art swap with one of my mutuals over on TikTok. Their handle over there is HBATSELL. Hannah and I are sending each other paper dolls. Because their thing on TikTok is they make paper dolls of monsters and other creatures. So what we did was we sent each other paper dolls of local cryptids to us. And with that, there would be a theme related to the paper doll and a challenge to use that theme to make a TTRPG miniature out of dollar store supplies, because that's my thing. So I sent them a paper doll of Doc Benton, who is a local cryptid to me, who is an undead monster, kind of self-inflicted Frankenstein dude. So the challenge that I sent them was Undead Experiment. And they have to make an undead experiment out of the dollar store toys that I sent them. They sent me a box as well. And what I got was this. I've already framed it. This is Hogzilla. You can't see the part of the letter here. But my challenge was to make a hybrid and huge miniature. So something larger than it should be that's mixed with something else. So... One of the things in the box was this little fox, and I think I'm going to make something cool and different out of this fox, because to scale, he would be large in comparison to most animals in D&D &D of a 28 millimeter scale. He's honestly probably the size of a bear, so I'm going to do a fox the size of the bear, and I think I'm going to do a few extra things to him to put that hybrid aspect in there. So let's get started and see what I come up with. So after doing a little bit more digging in the box that she sent me, I found some Bakugan surprise packs and I'm going to use this dragon's wings. I'm going to chop them off and put them on the fox to make a literal flying fox. So it'll be a half fox, half bat, and I'll use the foam and everything else that was in the box to make the rest of the mini. Here I'm using my snips to get the wings off of the dragon so I can put them onto the fox. Now I'm going to use hot glue to initially glue the wings to the fox. So I start with hot glue to place the wings because I don't really know where I want them or where they're going to look best. So I'm using the hot glue because it's a lot easier to remove than super glue. So I'll use the hot glue at first and see I can just peel it right off. And if I was to use super glue to start, it would leave a nasty residue and it would be a much harder to remove. After playing around with a couple of options, I decided that I want the whole bottom of the wing to be glued to the fox's back so it looks like it's fully attached like a bat wing because I felt like it just looked more natural than having it on its shoulder blades or how you would kind of place it on a dragon. Now that I figured out the placement, I want to shape the wings. So I'm going to be using my hot glue gun to make them look like they are spread out a bit more and getting ready for flight. Uh, I just didn't want them as curled as they are here. The trick is to heat up the plastic without melting it, but once I get it to a good temp, I use my fingers to just kind of mold them to the shape that I want. 
pro tip, once the plastic is soft and you get it to a spot that you like and you want it to stay that way, put it under cold tap water real quick and it will instantly harden. Now that I have them placed and shaped the way that I want, I'm going to use some gel super glue to just go over the joints to make sure that they're extra strong and they won't fall off while I'm painting or while we're playing with it. Another thing that I like about the gel super glue is that it will keep its shape. So if you do little streaks, it looks like fur and it blends very well into the rest of the miniature. So now I'm carving out the basic shape of the base out of this pink styrofoam. I really like this pink stuff. I haven't used it before. I usually use the blue. But this is just a bit more dense and I am loving it. All I'm really using here is this box cutter. You can use a hot wire cutter. Um, I just don't have one of those handheld ones. Uh, but a box cutter works perfectly fine. As you can see, I'm carving out chunks from the side to make it look a bit more like a cliff. My goal is to get it to look like an eroded bank or a cliff made out of sedimentary rock, so I'm doing a lot of divoting here. So now I'm leaning right into the sedimentary rock look and I'm putting more divots on the sides with the edge of the razor blade and just going to town with this. I really want it to look like stone so I'm doing bits here and there and divoting it all over the place. I'm carving the divots in a long section so that way it's clear in between the layers of sedimentary rock. The purpose of curving it in in the middle and then flaring it back out at the top is to make it look like it's a bank that's eroded, so that's what I'm going for there. Now that the base is carved and the mini itself is glued together, I'm going to glue the fox down onto the foam base. I'm going to use hot glue again and just press it down and let it do its job. The reason I don't use super glue is super glue will melt the foam. Now I'm going to use a paint and Mod Podge mix. I use a dark gray or black paint with Mod Podge and I'm going to cover the whole model in that. It'll act as a layer of sealant and it will also hold the miniature together better. This will also protect the foam from spray paint and other chemicals that I would use on the model. I'm not using a spray primer on this model, but if I was, this would work great in protecting the foam. So like I said, I'm not going to use spray paint on this model. Uh, mostly because I'm out of the kind that I like. Uh, so I'm just going to mix some white paint and some gray craft paint together and make a light gray primer coat out of that. And I'm just going to add a thin layer over all of it and then a second thin layer over all of it. So that way I have a nice primed coat. It's not spray primer, but it'll work just as well.
You might be able to get away with not priming it at all. I've done it in the past, but I want to make sure that the paint that I put on it after this is going to have a layer to hold on to. So now I'm going to use a color that's called Abyssal Blue from Scale Color and I'm going to cover the whole fox bat situation in this color. I'm going to use this as a base because I don't want to just do straight black so I'm going to use a blue tone that way I can work up from that blue and still give it a black look. This paint covers extremely well, so it won't take more than one coat. I think I added two coats just to be sure, but it covers fantastic. I definitely recommend it. This Abyssal Blue is also my favorite black substitute. It just looks so good on a finished product. So now I'm going to base the rock with this orange. Um, I really want it to look like a kind of canyon stone. So I'm going with this terracotta-ish orange and I will highlight up from there. This paint is also from Scale Color and didn't take much more than one coat as well. It covers very well and I just love this paint brand. I'd also like to say that I'm not affiliated with Scale Color. This isn't an ad at all. I just really like the paint, um, but it could be an ad uh, if you want. Uh, please reach out to me, Scale Color. Wink. Now I mix my homemade black wash with a little bit of sepia wash to do the base. This wash is going to make a nice shade in between all of the layers of stone and give a nice final look. As of late, I haven't been able to find a great black wash, so I've just been making my own and it's been working much better than anything I've been using. So if you have any suggestions for a good black wash, please let me know. I find most of them have too much of a glossy finish. So now I'm mixing my black wash with a blue ink. So that way it has the black and blue tones and I'm going to cover the whole bat fox model with that. Unfortunately, I'm holding most of the model out of frame. I really need to be better at looking at that on the screen while I'm painting, but you know, I'm sorry. Uh, so what I do here is I'm putting on the wash and I'm making sure to put a little extra on the crevices and the joints just to give it more shade in those areas. Alright, now I'm dry brushing the rock base with a 
Caucasian flesh color. Um, I figured this was the closest thing that I would use. I didn't want to just do a white dry brushing, so I'm using this like flesh tone. Um, and it's working really well actually, and I really like the way that it came out. I know what you're thinking. What kind of expensive dry brush is that? Well, this is the Dollar Store Wet n Wild makeup brush, and it is one of the best dry brushes I've used. Now I'm going to a lighter shade of blue, and I'm going to make sure that I do all of the edges of the tail, and the wings, and the ears, because I want a good like template for where I'm going to do all of the highlights once I move on from the dry brushing. So what I love about this brush is that it has a big surface area, but it's also what I hate about this. So you have to be very careful when you're doing the base to make sure you don't get blue onto the stone. But if you guard the base with your thumb while you do it, you won't have too much of an issue. Now I'm using the same shade of blue. It's called Cantabric Blue from Scale Color again. Um, but instead of dry brushing this time, I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm gonna highlight on all of the edges, all the little bone spots on the wings, all the little spots on his ears and his nose, all that stuff. I'm going through and just doing some more fine highlighting. Since this mini has fur, I'm going to do some quick streaks here and there to simulate the fur as well. Now I'm highlighting even lighter, so I'm using a lighter shade of blue, and I'm going to do a very quick dry brushing, and again, going to move on from that and lighten it up with more highlighting afterwards. I'm doing different layers of blue just to give more depth to the model and make it more interesting to look at. Now I'm just highlighting with that blue around the ears and everywhere I did it with the other one and just doing that extra layer. I don't want to cover up the last layer of that slightly darker blue, but I do want to make it pop a little more. So this is a lot thinner and a lot quicker. With the lighter color, I'm going to spend a lot more time on the face to make sure I can get those features to pop like the little tufts of fur around the muzzle. I'm also going to do the eyes and the nose. The nose is just gonna be black and the eyes are gonna be yellow. When you're putting yellow on a dark area, be sure to base it with pink. You'll thank me later. So now I'm taking some regular Mod Podge and I'm gonna use a paintbrush to spread it all over the top of the base. I'm making sure not to get any on the mini, so I'm being super careful. Now for the fun part, I'm going to stick the mini into this bag of flocking and shake it around so that way the fake grass gets on all of the Mod Podge and sticks to it. So now just to give a little bit more flair to the base, I'm going to add these cute little mushrooms that were in the box that she sent me. Uh, they're on these wires so I'm just cutting a little bit off and then I'll put a little bit of glue on the wire and just stick it into the base and let it dry. And voila! 
I had a blast making this little dude. I think he came out fantastic. I was originally going to name this creature something that was a mix between fox and bat, but that would be box or fat. So I'm going to go a different way, and I think I'm going to call this a yip, because that's the sound that a fox makes. I just hope it's not a weird furry thing. I think what I'm thinking is yiffing, so I think I'm safe. Hey there, so I had a blast doing this little art swap with Hannah. You can check out her stuff over on TikTok. Um, she has fantastic paper dolls, and you can also check out my paper doll that I made uh, on my TikTok as well if you want to hop over there. I had a blast making this dude. It was kind of fun limiting myself to the supplies that she sent me. I obviously used my own paint and uh, a few tools, but for the most part, I really just used like a box cutter from the dollar store and I used my heat gun a couple of times, but you know, besides that, most of the things that I used, you could get at the dollar store. Um, so it was fun limiting myself to the supplies that she sent me in the box. Um, because the toys, the foam, the mushrooms, the flocking, all that stuff, that's all that she sent me. That wasn't my own. Um, so it was fun keeping myself to those supplies. Um, I obviously based this guy off of, like, a bunch of things. Like, there's the Kitsune, which is a, you know, the Japanese fox creature, and the literal flying fox bat. So it was kind of a no-brainer to put a bat and a fox together and just kind of play with that a little bit, and I think it came out fantastic. I love him a lot. I think he looks great, especially with the limited resources that I had with this project. So uh, I would definitely do it again. Um, thank you for watching. You can check me out on my TikTok, on Instagram, um, and I think those are all of my platforms. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.